I'm currently in the process of doing some upgrades to my vSphere environment. I've got some Dell R630 servers. I'm running vSphere 8. And my intent is to implement vSAN, leveraging 10 gigabit networking and also some really fast disk storage. So as part of the caching part of that for disk storage, here is what I'm currently playing with. I've got a 500 gigabyte hard disk. This is the Samsung N70 EVO Plus NVMe M2 SSD. So it's a little computer chip, effectively a solid state hard drive, and it's 500 gigs. Now, as far as getting this installed and implemented in my Dell R630 servers, my intention is to go ahead and install it in a PCI slot. So to pull that off, I'm going to leverage this adapter. And I'd like to give a shout out to Kelvin Tran for giving me some recommendations because this is exactly what he did in his lab environment as well. So with this adapter and heat sink, we're going to go ahead and take the M2 storage from Samsung, install it here, and then using the PCI connector here, we can install this in the server itself. So I've already got three of them done. They're right here, ready to go. And then I've also got the one here and also the actual storage right here, which I want to go ahead and do a quick walkthrough of getting this up and ready. Also, I want to point out that I'm statically grounded, as is this static mat right here. So let me go ahead and take out the memory. So here's the 500 gigabyte solid state drive. And again, that's an NVMe drive in the M.2 form factor. And let's go ahead and open the enclosure that this drive is going to go into. So this comes with a little screwdriver right here. And also comes, of course, with the actual heatsink and PCI adapter, which is right here. So we'll remove that from the packaging as well. So now that we have it out of the packaging, which is always easier to work with, we're now going to install this hard disk into the heatsink slash PCI adapter. So to do that, we'll go ahead and turn the adapter on its back. And there are four screws right here, 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 and here. And we'll simply go ahead and remove those. I also want to point out this little back plate here that we just took the screws out of. It is pretty much flush with the backside of the enclosure. So I'm going to take that off, sit to the side. Also, I want to make a note that this little screw right here lines up with this little hole right here. At least that's, for me, that's how I'm going to remember which way it goes back on. And then we can take out the PCI adapter out of the rest of the heat sink. And then inside there's three thermal pads and there's a plastic covering on both sides, but we're not going to use all of them. We're going to use the one that makes the most sense based on the type of solid state drive we're installing as part of the heat sink and PCI adapter. So before we put this solid state drive into the enclosure here and part of the PCI adapter, let's also go ahead and remove this piece right here. And this is the part that just basically holds the other end of the solid state drive. So we're going to turn it over again and just remove this screw. Also notice that on this PCI adapter, there are four holes. So this one right here is going to use the full length. But if you had a shorter one, you could go ahead and put that standoff here or here or here. And that's the purpose for those additional holes. So with that standoff removed, let's take our solid state drive and I'll go ahead at a 45 degree angle here. And based on the key, put it into the slot for this solid state drive and just kind of wiggle it in place. And then what we'll do is we'll take this little standoff that we removed earlier and just place it right on the end here. And for this standoff, we want to put the part with the larger spacing here, the part that goes down to the actual circuit board. So with the thin part of the top and the bigger part of the bottom, we'll go ahead and just gently bring that back down to the motherboard. If you just kind of wiggle it a little bit, you'll find the spot where it fits perfectly. I'm going to just go ahead and hold it there. So I'm going to hold it there and turn it over. And let's go ahead and put that silver screw back in. So I'll grab the silver screw, put it in that slot, and then I'll go ahead and use the screwdriver that came with the attachment here. and gently screw that in. Now I'm not going to force this because all it's really doing is just holding that solid state drive in place. So I'm not going to use any significant pressure. I'm just doing it very, very lightly just to keep it in place. So here is the circuit board and here's the front. Here's our solid state drive that's now installed. So next let's talk about these thermal pads right here. So there's three of them and they are slightly different sizes. So the intention for these thermal pads is to go ahead and put one of them on top of the solid state drive. Now I've seen some other videos where they put one between solid state drive and the circuit board, or they tried to put it on the back and they had problems getting the back plate on. So based on the actual videos and documentation from Sabrent themselves, we're just gonna use one of these pads and place it on top of our solid state drive. So if you have a solid state drive with thicker chips, you might need to use a thinner pad, or in the case of this specific SSD drive, we're gonna go ahead and use the thick one because based on my previous experience with the first three, this thick pad actually fits and that gives us a nice tight coupling between the actual solid state drive and the heat it might generate and this heat sink, which is gonna be pressing against using the thermal pad here. So I'm gonna take the thick thermal pad 
And I'm gonna take off the plastic off of one side, just like that. And then go ahead and just lay this right on top of the solid state drive. And it's not rocket science, it just needs to be on the top there somewhere. And then in preparation for putting the enclosure back together, I'm gonna remove the little plastic film on the top side as well. And it's got a kind of a tacky surface. It's not really a super adhesive, but it's intended to go ahead and stick to the hard drive itself on the other side and the actual heat sink for better thermal conduction of the heat away from the solid state drive to the heat sink. So our next step is to take this circuit board, the PCI adapter and the installed hard drive and place it back in the heat sink. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take the heat sink here and I'm gonna take the circuit board, turn it over and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. Now, if you put it in, it's not quite perfect. The actual thermal pad here, you can lift it off. It's not gonna be like an adhesive that won't let go. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and line this up pretty well and put it in the heat sink. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put the back plate on. Now I also have seen people attempting to put the thermal tape here as well for a better connection between this and the back plate. But I've also seen when they tried that, that there's not enough room to get this to go in with the screws with that extra space right there. So based on what I saw from the vendor's website, and from their official YouTube channel, we're just going to use that one thermal pad on the top of the SSD and not use the other ones that they provided. So we'll take our back plate. I'm going to turn it over. I remember when I took it off that this little circle here at the end went on the same side here where the screw is. So I'm going to put it back the same way. So I'm just going to go ahead and place it here and line it up. Now I notice here that it doesn't, you know, fit flush like it did before. And the reason for that is that I've got that thermal pad that is taking up a little more space. So this is a little bit higher than it used to be because of that thermal tape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose to use that still thicker thermal tape and it's gonna put a little bit of gentle pressure to go ahead and put that back plate back in place. So notice here it's not quite flush, uh, but once I put the screws in it will be. Now if you have chips that are higher on your SSD, you might wanna choose to use one of the thinner thermal pads and not use the thicker one on the top of the chip. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with this. And the reason I'm gonna do that with some confidence is because I did it with these first three that I did and it worked out perfect. So with a little gentle pressure here, I'll go ahead and replace the four screws on the back plate. So now all four of those screws are in firmly. And if we look at the edge here, it's nice and even. Also, if I look at the top here, if I'm gonna be really critical of this, uh, there is a little bit of a bow here, right here in the middle part, away from the screws. And again, that's because of the thermal pad, the thick one I used, that's on the top of the solid state drive that's pushing against this side of the heat sink. So once again, if you're not comfortable with that, you can go ahead and use one of the thinner pads. But again, we do want some pretty good connection between the top of the SSD and this heat sink part of it for better heat transfer to keep our solid state drive as cool as possible. So in my case, if I compare this to one of my previous ones here and look at it, they're about the same. So now I've got four enclosures with a 500 gigabyte M2 SSD drive in each one of them. And I'm gonna be using these four SSD 500 gigabyte drives as part of the caching tier for VMware's vSAN that I'm gonna be implementing in my rack behind me. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video soon.